Hey everybody, it's great to be back on the channel again. Zeta is already one year old, time has absolutely flown by. So today we're recapping everything that we have done wrong in our first year with our first Doberman. She's just chilling in the background here. We're gonna tell you what went wrong, what we learned from it, and even throw in a little bit about a pretty confusing and messy behavior. It's been frustrating to try and figure out what is causing this. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. All of this on Doberman Planet. When we were preparing to get a Doberman, obviously we were really excited and full of anticipation. So we were just trying to get everything we could to get ready for her. Um, and a lot of that was kind of just splurging a little bit on toys and we got a lot of them. And that turned out to make her not so interested when she had just so many things on the floor to grab at and chew on. So it was a lot of overstimulation for her. So instead of getting excited for all the toys, she just didn't know <laughs> She didn't know what to do. What we found was that when we picked a lot of the toys back up, she would then get excited about the one or two toys that were left behind. And the side benefit to that is that now we had a bunch of toys in a stash in the closet that we could pull on on a moment's notice if we needed to distract her or just give her a toy for something. Another thing that we learned along the way, and this was a little bit more specific to me and my personality, was not to let the frustration stop you from praising her. So let's take, for example, say we're trying to cook dinner and she needs to lay down calmly. She usually does this, but sometimes she'll be all worked up. She'll be zooming around and just being a little too chaotic. So when she's doing all of these things we don't want her to do, as it's really easy to get too frustrated. And then when she finally does calm down, you're so frustrated that you forget to praise her or you don't feel like praising her. So she doesn't get that reward for the desired behavior. What I finally picked up on and got my head around was that you need to praise the good behavior. Don't just tell them what you don't want, tell them what you do want. So when I started praising the good behavior, even if I'm frustrated that she just did 75 things that I didn't like, still praise her when she does the one thing that you do like, because then she knows next time, oh, this is what he's after. Let me get that so that I can get some praise. I would definitely recommend always praising good behavior, even if you're frustrated. Some of these mistakes happen, you know, for a few months at a time, or, you know, they're one mistake and we, learn how to get over it. And some of these definitely are, can be generalized as a long-term um, behavior for Zeta. For example, really specifically, engaging in her misbehavior, like when she tries to take a sock to get her attention. Um, you know, we, in the beginning, might have gone chasing her to get the sock back. And then you quickly learn, well, that's not a great thing. So let's correct the behavior with a firm no. She drops the sock and she learns that I don't care enough to chase you for that. It has no value to me. That's one example. There's so many different things like, you know, just petting her after she's done something bad, you know, that's a reward to her. So engaging misbehavior and learning how to correct those little things that are gonna carry throughout um, her whole year of puppyhood. So those are big things. So another thing that we learned, and this would fall into the category of more of a one-time event rather than an ongoing issue, if you've checked out our other videos, you will know that when we are both at work, we have an outdoor pen for her built so that she has a place to stay and has room to run around. It's about 2000 square feet. Uh, it's five foot tall, black chain link fence. It is a metal fence. The metal is wrapped in black vinyl. So we had it professionally installed. We even had some boards dug so that she couldn't dig out from underneath. It's filled with some red crushed stone so that if she digs a hole, it's easy to fill it back in with your foot. No big deal. It's really a good setup for her. But one day she just decided that she'd had enough. So she broke out, she popped the little metal ties that are on the bottom of the fence off, and then one by one unwound all of the little wires on the bottom of the fence until she had created a hole that was big enough to escape. Well, we live next to thousands of acres of conservation land. There's a neighborhood nearby. She could have gone anywhere. She chose not to leave the property at all. She just walked over to the garage, hopped up. She knows how to open doors that have a handle rather than a knob. So she hopped up, popped the door open and just hung out in the garage all day and waited for us. And when we got home, all we saw was this funny little Doberman head sticking out the window like, hey, where you guys been? I've been waiting on you. So what did we learn from this? Number one, most definitely, I put up a camera system right away just in case anything like that happened again. It was unsettling to say the least to come home to an empty pen. What I learned number two, I would have just picked a different fence. I thought the metal was strong enough, but I would go with something solid. Third of all, this kind of goes without saying, these dogs are very, very driven. They're also very athletic. So if you're gonna build a contained area, plan it with that in mind. And then when you're done with it, make it like two or three times stronger because they're gonna surprise you and they're gonna pull some stuff that's gonna make you go, oh my God. 
One of the more frustrating um, behaviors that's actually still kind of ongoing for Michael and I is that she really likes to test the boundaries outside of um, her known environment. So when she gets around people that she knows well, but she knows won't correct her very well, um, she tends to get a little bit, you know, more rambunctious, you know, jumping a little more or just kind of, you know, testing boundaries. She knows that they're not going to be as firm as Michael and I, which is really important for, you know, a Doberman in their personality. Yeah, so like she said, it almost only happens around family and friends. If it's a complete stranger in an unknown environment, she's the stereotypical standoffish Doberman. Who are you? What do you want? If it's with someone that she does know, whether it's in public or at their house, like a family friend, um, that's when this behavior becomes an issue. You almost always have to keep her either on a leash or on an e-collar, even inside, because that's the only way that she knows she doesn't have complete full roam and that you are still in charge. And when you have a dog like this, that if they do something wrong, could end in some serious damage, you kind of still have to set those boundaries. And it's actually really cool to learn and, or to watch other people learn how to deal with her. Like her sister, for example, is excellent at handling her now. That said, you kind of have to work to get there. It doesn't come natural, at least not for her. So that's something that we've been working on. So the number one most frustrating and honestly just flat out weird thing that we've been having to deal with lately is not one thing actually, it's a series of events. So what happens is we will run her, we'll take her outside, exercise her, she'll come in, she'll be nice and tired, she'll grab some water, usually a decent amount of it, that's just how she is, and then she'll go lay on the couch and take a nap. Well, the issue is that about 20, 30 minutes later, she'll wake up in a puddle of her own pee. She doesn't do it while she's awake, she doesn't do it consciously or intentionally, she will just wake up and the couch and her covered in pee. Um, we took her to the vet. This happened first around six months. We thought maybe she had a UTI. The vet ran some tests, gave us some medicine. About a week later, it was gone. So we figured UTI, no big deal. Didn't show up again. So then around eight months, she got spayed. And then around 10 months, it started happening again. So we went back to the vet, see maybe she, thinking maybe she had another UTI, gave her the medicine, no change whatsoever. And it has been happening since then. So for the past two or three months, she has been doing this. Um, Potty training with her went super smooth. There's no issue with her potty training. She lets us know when she has to go. This is a completely separate thing where she does it in her sleep. There is no signal like, hey, I have to go out to the bathroom. It just happens. And it is so frustrating. We've definitely had to um, learn and adapt how to mitigate the behavior. Obviously, she's not doing it intentionally. Um, you can't reprimand her for that nor would we and you know we just have to monitor how much she's drinking bring her out on you know a kind of a scheduled time you know it's it's something that we have to deal with we're we're definitely still looking into because it is frustrating and um i would hate to see it on go for for a long period of time yeah so if any of you guys out there have any advice have dealt with something similar with your doberman please let us know this is driving me crazy yeah she's a fantastic dog in so many other ways and she's not even doing this on purpose, but it is so frustrating to constantly be cleaning up pee. And it, I mean, it's, it's not something she's doing on purpose. It's just really frustrating to have to deal with. Overall, this year has gone very well. I think, in my opinion at least, one of the biggest misconceptions that I had coming in, and it seems like a lot of others have this as well, is the amount of stimulation that these dogs need in a given day. So I say that stimulation instead of exercise because it's not just running around. Taking her in public, giving her interactive toys, training, being around other people, being around other dogs. There are so many easy ways to get them physically stimulated or mentally stimulated so that they're tired at the end of the day, which at the end of the day is the end goal. So there are so many things that you could do. It's significantly easier to have a calm, well-behaved Doberman than I thought it was gonna be. And that honestly has been such a mental relief that going in was maybe a question mark in our minds. Please follow us along on Instagram if you want to see more Zeta content at Zeta the Doberman. If you would, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us and the channel out. Uh, when you subscribe, you get to see all kinds of content like other people just like us sharing their experiences with their Dobermans and helping to just educate the world that these dogs are awesome. All the misconceptions about them. They're not where it's at. These dogs are great. Thank you guys for watching. Zeta here is going to see you next time.